everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya. I have an amazing brand new bag for you today out from Kaya Papaya. I love Kaya Papaya designs. She writes the best patterns. They are always so classy and they go together so nice. This bag is amazing. You ready for it? It's called the Fallon Bag. Look at this thing. It is a big bag. It is a tote. It, the measurements are 16 by 11 by five. So it is a good size bag, but look at all of this gorgeous detail. This bag is amazing. Um, it is labeled intermediate. I think just because of all the different, I mean, there's so many different details to it. So I would suggest having some practice underneath your belt before you attempt this bag, but it goes together so beautifully. The pattern is very well written. I absolutely love it. All right, let's go over the details of this thing. I made it out of all vinyl on the outside. I interfaced with Decaville light out of my seam allowances, Decaville heavy on the bottom. I would do that again. I love the shape and feel it gave this bag. If your vinyl is thicker and holds its body better, maybe you don't need the Decaville light, but mine was more of a soft slouchy vinyl, so it definitely needed the interfacing. Um, the front has a slip pocket right here. Perfect for a little phone to slip in there with a magnetic snap. Um, the sides have these big side pockets on each side. It's got handles and a removable crossbody strap. I've got purse feet on the bottom. The back is just very pretty. <laughs> inside, inside is where it gets crazy. She added so many cool details to the inside of this bag, let alone the outside. I mean, it's just crazy. Okay, so we have a recessed zipper closure. Open that up. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty the inside of this bag is. It is so pretty. Okay, you've got a zipper pocket here with a pretty zipper pocket trim. You've got a double divided slip pocket right there with a pretty trim. This right here is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It is a sunglasses case built into your bag. It's sewn into the seams of your bag. How cool is that? <laughs> My favorite part of the bag right there. Um, then on this side, you have a clip for keys or whatnot. You have a zipper pocket here and it's a slip pocket. It's a two-in-one, right? You got your zip pocket, slip pocket behind it. I mean, the details that are in this bag are amazing. Do not skip out on any of it. You need to put it all in there. It is just so beautifully designed. Absolutely love it. Um, trying to think if there's any more details. I don't think there's any more details. The pattern has the option for a flap trim, a metal flap trim which I really wanted to put on, but it just didn't come in time. I ordered it too late. That was my fault. I was a slacker. Um, but the metal trim, so pretty if you wanted to add that onto your flap. All right, that is all of the details. I don't go over every single piece that I cut out because there's quite a few pieces. I just kind of start sewing. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, this pattern, there will be a link for the pattern down in the description below along with all the vinyls that I used. I used three different vinyls from three different companies. This is Indo Love Creation, Your Vinyl Source, and Bodio. So I used three different <laughs> companies. I'm just kind of mixing and matching all my vinyl. Um, Everything will be below in the description of what I used and where I got it from. And let's start making this gorgeous bag. So normally my first little part of the video is me going over all the pieces and making sure everything's cut out and all that kind of good stuff. But there are quite a few pieces for this bag. 
and I feel like it would be a big chunk of time. So I am just going to go over the pieces as I'm sewing them. Make sure you've gone over your pattern. I have them all labeled. All of my pieces will have labels on them and I highly suggest that because there's so many um, pieces to cut. Make sure all your pieces are labeled. Make sure it's interfaced the way you wanna interface it. I'm doing Decaville light out of my seam allowances on my front panel pieces, Decaville heavy on my bottom out of my seam allowances, and then all my cotton pieces just have a cotton woven fuse to them. Um, I also have done all the extra interfacing for the straps and stuff that she has in the pattern, and I will go over that as we sew. Um, so we're just going to jump right into this one. All right, here we go. I'm going to start by sewing up my crossbody strap and my handle. She doesn't have that at the beginning, but I just like to get those out of the way. So I'm not left with that after I've done all the bag and I'm just like, ugh, I still have to sew the handle. So I've got my handles here. They, I'm doing them the length that she has in the pattern two handles and one cross body strap. Label or marked my center. I'm gonna fold my raw edges in. I have shown this many times, fold your raw edges into the center and then we will fold that one more time and I will sew down each side of the handles and cross body strap and then we'll go from there. Okay, there is handle number one. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat for the next one. Okay, now I'm going to do my cross body strap. It is done the same exact way. I'm going to go ahead and put my hardware onto my crossbody strap. And my crossbody strap is a 3 4 inch, so I have 3 4 inch hardware here. I'm going to go up and down through my slide, just like that. I'm going to sew that, and then I will be putting rivets through my crossbody strap as well, little stitching and rivets. Okay, and then I will slide on one of my swivel clips here, and then I will go up, and then back down, just like that. Okay, and then I will put my other swivel clip on this other end here and sew that on and then again I will go through and put rivets as well on these. Okay, so I have my crossbody strap and my handles done, and we will dive into the bag. We are going to start by preparing the side panels with our D-ring connectors, okay? So we have these two strips. I have already marked a line down the center and folded my raw edges in on one of them. So I will show you. Here's my second one. 
I've got double-sided tape down my center and I will fold my edges into that center line to meet each other. Okay, and now with a, a pen that can come off, which I love these pens from Lauren Mormino. They're for vinyl and leather and they wipe off with a little bit of moisture. Um, you wanna measure two inches down and make a mark. Okay, because that's as far down as we are going to sew. So we are going to sew on each side of these connectors at an eighth of an inch seam allowance down to that two inch mark and stop. Um, I will show you how to pull the threads through so it has a clean stopping point um, and you don't have to backstitch. All right, here we go. So I'm sewing down to that two inch mark right there and I'm not back stitching I'm just pulling my thread out right there and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side So I didn't back stitch. Now, if your thread is the same color as your material, you probably could back stitch and you would be okay. But when it's a contrasting color like this, it just makes for a nicer bag. So what you do is you go to your back thread and you give it a tiny little tug and it will pop out a little loop of thread. And that's your front thread and you just pull that through to the back. Okay, just like that and pull it through the back. Now all four threads are in the back of your connector. I will tie those off. I will give them a little bit of heat to melt them. And then we will repeat for the other side or for the other connector. All right, I'm just gonna tie these off real quick. Okay, I'm going to repeat with this second side. Same exact steps. Well, I'm going to put some double-sided tape on the edge here of the end we just sewed on the wrong side. And then I'm going to take my three four inch D rings and slip that on. And you're essentially folding this down three inches, okay? So you can either mark from here to here, or you can use a ruler, and your fold is going to be an inch and a half total. I'm going to measure. I want to fold it right here. All right, so your fold from the top to bottom here should be an inch and a half. And then your strap should be 11 and a half inches when you're done folding it. Okay, go ahead and repeat that for the second strap. And let's go ahead and attach these to our side panels. I'm going to put double sided tape on the back of these that we just sewed. Okay. Now here is my panel. This um, notched out edge is the bottom. This is my side panel. I do have my side panels prepped with 
Decaville light because my vinyl is kind of slouchy and soft, so I want it to have some stability. And then I put another piece of Decaville heavy, or you could use Peltex right here. She gives the measurements in the pattern, and this will be for your O-rings and um, those straps that we're gonna add up there. So make sure that your side panel is prepared this way. It will help. I'm going to mark the center of my pattern, um, of my side panel. I have the top and bottom clipped where my center is. And then again, this is that pen that will come off the vinyl, but I mean, I'm gonna be covering that up anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mark both of my panels so I have the center. Okay, and then I'm going to attach my connectors to that center line. Try and get it as straight as you can. I kind of like to start at the bottom here, okay, and go up slowly and try and stay on that center line. And that should be an inch and a half from the top. Yep, inch and a half from the top. Okay. So now you want to sew down, like from bottom up and get as close to that stitching that we have there and come across right there and back down. All right. Here we go. All right, now if you are sewing with vinyl like I am, you definitely want to protect your vinyl on that hardware coming across with that walking foot. So I'm just going to put a little scrap piece right there to protect my walking foot from scratching it up. And then put it behind coming down. Okay, that's strap number one. Do you see how it kind of came right across and all of my sewing lines matched? Pretty cool, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing for the second panel. All right, there we go. Next step, we are gonna work on our O-ring connectors. You should have four short connectors and two long connectors. You want to put a center line down all of them with some double-sided tape, and then you're folding all of your raw edges in. On all six, there should be six total, two long and four short. After you have your two long and four short all folded in, put your four short aside for a minute. We're gonna work on these two long ones. Um, we are going to sew some lines. We don't wanna backstitch. We wanna pull through and tie again. I will probably do the tying part off camera because it takes me a minute and you guys don't really need to see me tie. I just did it on the other things. It's the same exact step. So if you can't mark on your vinyl, uh, turn it over and mark it somehow. You just need to know two and a half inches down from each edge. I'm just going to put the tiniest little mark on mine. And that's our beginning spot. And we are going to sew from there to the edge on each side. I'm going to do that on all four sides 
two and a half. So she suggests starting at that point. So start at that two and a half inch mark. And I'm not going to backstitch. I'm just going to go straight through to the end. It's super hard not to backstitch. So used to it. <sighs> you can backstitch here on this end here, but just not there. All right. And then repeat on this other side. That's what we're looking at. Again, I'm going to pop these threads through. I'm going to tie them in the back. And I'm going to do that on all four sides of these connectors. All right, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and do that for this second O-ring connector. I'm going to pull my threads through and tie it. And then we'll continue to the next step. Okay, so I have my two larger O-ring connectors. Here's the back. My threads are all pulled through. Looks nice from the top. Okay, so I'm going to mark just like we did on our side D-ring connectors. I'm just going to put a mark three inches down on each side and we're gonna fold our O-rings onto it, all right? All right, so I'm going to take off that double-sided tape on the end. I'm going to put my O-ring connector in there, and then this is going to fold down to that line. So the length of this to the O-ring should be an inch and a half. Yep. Okay. And do that on all four sides. And then the length of your connector when done should be six and a half inches. Yep, six and a half inches. So when you're done doing that, you're going to put another line of double-sided tape along the back here so we can attach it to our side panel. Okay, so go ahead and repeat for this other side. And then we'll put it on our side panels. So I'm going to grab a side panel here. I'm going to fold my O-ring in half. And for my reference, going to mark the center on the wrong side of it. Okay, down here. So I can make sure I'm getting this in the center. And then I want to measure down two inches from the top, which is right here. It should pretty much be on that line up with the line where you came across on your connector here. That's about right in the center. All right, so I'm going to take this and line this up. So I know this is my center here. I'm going to do it this way. I can see it easier. All right. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Two inches down, centered, and I taped it on. All right, so next we're going to sew this on. We're going to do a rectangle on this connector we just laid down, connecting these lines right here on each side, 
And if you don't want to back stitch and have that back stitch showing again, we will pull through to the back and tie it. Okay. Here we go. I should have pulled this through um, earlier. I'm just gonna go up a little bit farther, see if I can get this. There we go. I'm just gonna pull my thread through real quick so it doesn't get caught up in the other threads. There we go. Okay, there's my connector. I've got my threads all pulled to the back. Okay, I'm going to tie those off and melt them and then we'll repeat for the other side panel. Another thing I want to mention, do you see how that sewed through this Peltex? That's exactly, or not Peltex, but my Decaville Heavy or Peltex. That's exactly what I wanted to do. All right, that's what it should look like. All right, I'm going to repeat for the next panel. Next, we need to work on these smaller O-ring connectors, and they're the ones that are going to connect it from here to here. All right, I'm just gonna show you one, and you do the same thing on all of them, and it's very similar to what we just did. So I marked one and three-fourths inches down from this edge. I'm going to top stitch down. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm gonna pull my threads through and tie. It just makes it look clean and nice when your stitching is done that way. And we will do that on all four connectors. Again, I'm just gonna show you one and then I will do the other three off camera. Did I do the right one? Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, and then the other side here, I'm starting at that one and three fourths inch marking. And then we'll pull these through to the back like we've been doing. Okay, so all of my threads are towards the back. I'm going to tie those off and I'm going to do that on all four connectors. All right, so I have all of my small connectors sewn. At those measurements, I'm gonna turn them over and I'm going to now add them to my um, side panel. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape 
right there. And then I marked down two inches about. You can adjust that for your bag. So what we need to do now is we're going to be folding those over and attaching them to our panel just like this. So you want to take the tape off the back and you want, yeah, it'll be about right. So I'm going to fold it on that line, which is about an inch fold right here. And it looks like I can go just a little bit more. You want it to be flush with the side of the bag about right there. Okay. I'm going to add this side real quick too. This way, no, this way. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Takes me a minute sometimes to get my brain working. Okay, and it looks like I can fold it just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm gonna just put a little piece underneath each of these and attach it to my bag and then I will sew the connectors on. Okay, just underneath the connector like that. And just make sure that everything is looking straight when you put it on. Okay, right there. Right here. Okay, so I am going to now sew these on. I'm just going to come up and try and meet it up with these um, stitches here over and back down. Same with this one. All right, here we go. Make sure that you're protecting any uh, material that you need to from your walking foot. I need to go over just a tiny bit more. There is side strap number one. Now I'm gonna do this other one. All right, we are finished putting those on. They look good. All right. So now you want to put some rivets on. Um, she suggests right there and right there and right there and right there. Now, the only trick about these side ones is you need to make sure it's at least three-fourths of an inch in from the side to allow for that seam allowance there. So I'm going to go get my hole punch and punch some holes and do some rivets, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have kind of measured evenly on my panel and figured out where I wanted my holes and I punched my holes. And now I'm going to install my rivets. I have a rivet press, which is super handy. I don't have to use a hammer and tools. I just press this. So I just attach my rivets. And remember, you're going to do this on both panels. I'm only showing you one panel. So everything I do on this panel, you will need to repeat for the other panel. And I just remembered there's another hole right there I need to make. Okay. 
All right, so I'll press these first. Okay, there's one. So I want one more hole right there. So I'm just gonna get, I use this little Japanese hole punch. You can get them off of Amazon. They kind of do wear out pretty quickly, but the good thing is they're not very expensive. So I don't know. I'm just using kind of this tool as a little guide. This is normally for straps, but it kind of works for getting in the center of a lot of things. That's about the center right there. Okay. And then you want to punch one right in the middle right there. So that gets your side strap too, which is great. Your D-ring. Make sure that went all the way through. Almost. Okay, let me get one more rivet. Oops. And put this one through. All right, and then I will press it right there. And then I will go ahead and I will do the exact same thing to the other panel, I will add these side straps. I will add my five rivets, and then we will continue to the next step. Okay, I have both of my side panels all put on with my rivets, all done. I'm gonna set those aside for a minute. I'm gonna take out my side pocket pieces, my lining and my exterior. All right, so we are going to Put these two right sides together. And remember this cutout is the bottom of your pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna put these two right sides together and clip the top and I'm gonna sew at the top at our seam allowance, given in the pattern. And then I will flip it over and top stitch. it really good there. You can put a couple clips on it if you need to. Get that laying nice. And then I'm going to top stitch along that top of the pocket. And then as I'm top stitching, I'm also going to continue. So I'm going to top stitch and then I'm just going to come down here and baste the whole pocket together as I go. All right, here we go.
All right. Turn it over, make sure I caught it all. Looks good. Yeah, looks good. All right. So there's my pocket, top stitch at the top. I'm going to do the same thing for the second side. All right, so now I'm going to grab my side panel piece and I'm going to line up the bottom of this first. So this whole area down here and I'm going to clip that into place. Okay, and then I wanna take it and clip it along the side here. And it's going to have a little bit of a billow to it. It's going to come out and you want that. That's what we're going for because you want to have room in that side pocket. Okay. So it should pop up just like that. Go ahead and come over to this other side and do the same thing. Okay, so now we are going to see how that kind of stands up. That's what we want. Now I'm going to baste this onto my side panel, all right? And I do all of my basting about at the same length that I do all of my top stitching, around a five or a five and a half, and anywhere between there on my industrial. And then you do it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance usually. Some patterns call for one fourth of an inch basting, but um, very rarely. So that is pocket number one, all basted down. Okay, I'm going to do the other side now. Okay, so when you're done with those side pockets, put those aside, and now we're gonna work on our center pocket, okay? I've got my center pocket pieces, the one with the notch cut out. We want to put our magnetic snap on it, and I'm also going to put my label, like my handmade Saya swag label. So I've got it marked out here, and I'm going to lay my washer on top, Okay. And then I cut the lines where that washer is. And then install my female part of the snap goes on this one. And it looks like it didn't cut all the way through. There we go. Okay. Now if you want, you can put a piece of Peltex or Decaville Heavy. I don't absolutely need it because I already have a Decaville Light, but I'm going to anyways because I have a feeling it'll be opened and closed a lot and that extra little piece of support couldn't hurt. And then you always want to cover it with some kind of either you can fuse some interfacing over it, or I just use duct tape right over that snap. 
And then I'm gonna move down here. She suggests two and a half inches up from the bottom. You don't have to put it right here on the front pocket, but I'm going to. I think it's a great place for it. Same exact steps. I'm not going to put an extra piece of interfacing behind this though, because it's just my nameplate. It doesn't get tugged on much and it's already got the Decaville light behind it. Okay. And then some duct tape. All right, that's all prepped. So next you wanna take this panel and the lining. You're gonna put them right sides together up here at the top. And we are gonna sew along this top curve. Uh, our seam allowance, I believe. Yes. Okay. Move you in just a little bit. Here we go. You could always draw um, your sewing line along this piece too if you have a hard time just following it. That's another option. some pinking shears and cut that down. You want to put either notches in it or some pinking shears with that curve. Okay. And then we're going to turn it. And I'm going to roll the seam out. And then we're going to top stitch along this top seam. All right, I'm going to top stitch along that. Now, you want to get the front center pocket, top front center pocket piece, lay that right side up. You are going to take this and lay it wrong side together with the bottom of your slip pocket. So this is what we're doing because we're sewing this together and then we're bringing it up like this and it will be above our pocket piece. So our, so our zipper pocket, or not our zipper pocket, so our slip pocket isn't an endless deep hole. <laughs> it's making it so you can reach your stuff, okay, basically. 
Um, I remember her explaining this. All right, so I am going to sew this at my seam allowance. It's the bottom of the lining pocket with the top of the center pocket, right sides together. Okay, and then you're going to open this seam allowance. So you're gonna flatten it in the back. And we're gonna top stitch down both sides just to get that seam to lay flat. So this is what you're looking at, all right? Okay, so we're gonna take this and measure three inches down from the top of it. And just put little markings right there and right there on each side. And then we're going to pull this up to that marking right there and right there. And that's the placement for this pocket on here. Okay, so that's what the front looks like. That's what the back looks like. Your pocket is pulled up, right? Okay, and now we're going to just baste the pocket sides down. Here we go. Okay, and then do the same thing on the other side. Baste that pocket down. All right, so your pocket isn't this endless abyss. I just realized I did this top wrong. I have raw edges here and I shouldn't have raw edges. I was supposed to attach it from the side and all the way down and I did not do that. I'm gonna have to think of how to fix that. <laughs> okay, so when I sewed this top of my pocket, I only went from curve to curve. I didn't include this top part and I was supposed to. I don't know why I didn't, I don't know why I didn't see that. So what I did is I just unstitched it right here and I'm just going to fold this raw edge down because it is vinyl and I can do that. And I'm just going to top stitch along here and then baste it back down just like that. And it works just fine. So I was able to fix it, so I'll show you. So I folded it down and I'm just going to top stitch this little piece. All right, so now it's folded down and there's no raw edge. That might mean my pocket will be like a fourth of an inch off on this and I'll have to trim something down a tiny bit, but that's okay. So I've got that top stitched and now I will just baste it on and that is now fixed. So just be aware when you're making this bag to stitch the entire top part of this pocket together. I don't know why I only did the curve. Okay, that's fixed, moving on. Okay, we're going to do the flap next. I made a mistake on the flap and applied my Peltex Decavel Heavy, whatever you used. I applied it to the exterior piece instead of the lining piece like she has in the pattern. 
I'm hoping it comes out right. If it doesn't, I have enough to redo it. So I'm gonna try it. So um, I'm going to put double-sided tape on both of my lining and flap just to make it a little bit easier and I won't have to use an iron. Let's see if it works. All right, so I drew a line from the measurement that she has. in the pattern and I'm just putting the tape along that and I also have installed the other um the other part of my magnetic snap as well to my lining so if you haven't done that yet go ahead and do that All right, I'm just so used to adding the interfacing to my exterior piece, so I need to pay more attention. Okay, so I'm gonna get these two pieces and I'm gonna do right sides together. And we are just sewing down here at the curved edge of the flap, all right? All right, here we go. Okay, I'm going to use my pinking shears and I'm going to cut that down. And then I want to turn this part out. And I am going to um, attach a flap accent piece. It should come in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> so by the time I am almost to the end of this video, hopefully I will have that piece to attach. But I am going to be putting on the little flap accent. All right, so now I should be able to fold all of this over evenly. We'll see how I do. Okay, and they should line up. There we go. So that did work so far with it being on that side for me. All right, let's do the other side. I'm gonna have to unclip it though to do the other side. All right, let's fold the other side over. There it goes. Let's just line everything up nicely. Okay. I think it worked. Cool. And then you don't have to worry about pulling this whole dang thing through. I think that's the 
the idea of doing it this way is because normally you would sew this all up and you would have to pull it through the right way through after you sew it wrong sides together. And doing it this way, you don't have to worry about that. And your, yeah, lines up pretty dang good. Okay. I like it. Okay, there is my flap. There's the lining side. There's the front side. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this all the way down and around. I just want to make sure it looks good. Yep. All right. Here we go. All right, so pretty. Okay, so there is my flap, front, back. I have my magnetic snap. I will add my edge trim, my flap trim um, at the very end, I think, just because I don't have it on hand right now. And we will go to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our back center panel. So here is my back center panel piece. I have my center clipped here. I clipped my center on my flap here and I want to extend it about a half of an inch, she says. So make sure those two line up. About a half of an inch. I'm just going to get my little ruler out a little bit more. About right there. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to baste that on first. It is wrong side up. My flap is wrong side up because it's gonna flip over like that onto my bag. All right, so I'm gonna baste this on first. All right. And then I wanna get my top center back panel piece, my top of center back panel piece, yep. All right, and then I'm gonna put that on top right sides together. And I'm gonna sew that at my seam allowance. Now I did put Decaville light and Decaville light on all my outside pieces, even these ones. This is my front pocket out of my seam allowances. All right, because I don't want it all saggy um, because my vinyl is not a very thick vinyl. All right, so I'm going to push the seam this way with the flap up. Everything's going up. My seam is going down. And we are going to do two rows of top stitch along this floral bottom panel here, okay? Two rows of top stitch. So it's going through all of those seams. 
and giving it a little extra support along there. There's one row and then I'm gonna do one more. Just right below that one. All right, so there is my back center panel all done. We are going to start piecing the whole exterior body together. So you wanna get your center panels and your side panels and we're gonna start just sewing them all together. Okay, so we wanna take them right sides together. I'm gonna clip that, make sure everything is going up the way you want it. Good, good. Okay, I'm gonna sew along that at my seam allowance. I'm going to flip this and you can trim your seam allowance right here if needed. Um, what part does she suggest trimming? Only the part with the center pocket right here. So just to cut down on your bulk. So I'm going to just trim maybe. These are my more um, doll scissors because I cut my zippers with this pair. <laughs> All right. So I just trimmed away a little bit on that pocket piece. All right. So we're going to flip this and you want the seam going towards the center panel here. So our seam is going to go towards the center panel and we're going to top stitch along that. I'm just kind of making sure the seam is going towards that center panel as I go. I don't want my foot to tear my vinyl right there, so I'm putting a piece behind it. So that is what that looks like when you're done. And now we're going to just piece together the entire thing. So I am gonna put this one over here next on this side. And sew this on, same way. I'm gonna do it all the way around. And I'm gonna top stitch after each piecing and we'll make a full circle. And then the last tricky part is top stitching the very last seam because you're top stitching through the whole circle of the bag. 
Um, so that can be kind of tricky, but it's doable. Here we go. Okay, so now we have the all four pieces sewn together. We're gonna put the last two sides together and that will make our full circle. And then we'll have to top stitch inside of that circle to finish it off. All right, so I'm gonna kind of open it up. All right, I think I'm gonna start from this way and have it come down. And this is kind of impossible to show. <laughs> Just a second. Okay, I'm gonna try it from this way. I kind of put my bag into the machine because then when I come out, it'll come out this way. You could do it either way. Um, whatever is most comfortable for you. Any way you do it, it's going to be just a little bit um, awkward and tricky. So just go slow. I would say that wasn't as like awkward and hard as I thought it would be. The hardest part is just getting it situated in your machine to do that line of stitching, if that makes sense. Okay, so my whole bag is now stitched together and we are going to add the bottom piece. Okay, so I have my bag here now. So these are my center panels right here, my floral ones. I'm going to take my bottom piece. It has my... Decaville Heavy out of my seam allowances. I have put purse feet on, protected the purse feet. It's good to go. So I'm gonna sew this on one side of the, at a time. I'm gonna do my front long side first and center that up. And I do have centers cut as well. All right, clip that along, right sides together. And we're gonna sew that on first at our seam allowance. All 
So I have this one sewn on. I'm gonna flip it over. And now I'm going to clip it to this other side here. Actually, I'm just gonna do it in my lap. It's a little bit easier. Right here. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing. Sew that at your seam allowance. So once you have the sides on there, or the long sides, we are going to go to these corners. And we're going to flatten these corners just like that. It's a big bag, sorry, it's hard to get it. There we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Flatten these corners. All right, we're gonna take that under our machine and sew that at our seam allowance. And then I'm gonna do another row of stitching right to the right of that line, just for extra reinforcement. go right next to that one and do another row. And then you can trim this seam allowance down a little bit if you would like to about a one fourth. I'm gonna trim it down just a little bit. All right, and then go ahead and repeat with this other side. Okay, we want to draw a line one inch down from the top, okay? Because this is going to be a drop-in lining. So we're gonna draw a line one inch down. We're gonna put double-sided tape along that line. And then we're going to be folding 
the top down evenly, which should, if you used um, Decaville Light, I cut mine a half inch out of my seam allowances. So that should line up perfectly with where my Decaville Light is placed. Um, so we're gonna do that before we go to the lining. Okay, so I folded down my top edge evenly with that double sided tape. I have some clips there just to hold it in place so it doesn't um, come undone with my tape. I turn my bag right side out and this is what we have. Look how pretty that is. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'll go over just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start to piece together the lining. We are going to work on our lining now. So I have my first piece, my slip pocket. I'm going to fold it wrong side or <laughs> right sides together, just like this. And we're just sewing along the two sides and leaving the top open, all right? So I'm just sewing along the two sides. And... Add our seam allowance, okay. All right, I'm just gonna trim these corners down here and then we are going to turn it right side out and give it a really good press I'm gonna go press that at my iron and I'll be right back. All right, so I have it ironed out. I find this next part a little bit easier if I go ahead and baste this top shut real quick. And then it's all together while you're putting on the trim and you don't have two pieces, okay. So with this raw edge, I'm going to add my trim. So I just have a piece of my vinyl. You can use um, glue, glue works great as well. I'm just using a wider piece of double-sided tape. I'll just have to be sure as I'm sewing it on that my needle isn't sticking and I'll have to maybe put some oil or wipe my needle. So I am going to lay this just below my center line because as you fold it over, it takes up a little space. So just below my center line. Okay. And then I'm gonna fold that over and hopefully get it pretty even. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna clip that. So again, you can use glue. If you don't want to use double-sided tape, go for it. Glue works fabulous as well. I'm just impatient and don't want to wait for the glue to dry, <laughs> basically. All right, so when you have that all put down, we are going to stitch that onto there.
All right. We've got that trim stitched on there. You can um, trim down your corners. That looks good. I've got to trim these little sides just a tiny bit to be even with my pocket. All right. Beautiful. We're going to add this to our lining. All right. So I want to divide this slip pocket real quick into two. Just a minute. Okay, yep. So just measure where that center line would be for your pocket. And I'm going to sew this all at once. All right. So I have my markings all on my lining that are in the pattern for this pocket placement. All right. And I've got all my lines matching up. I'm going to sew down. And across the bottom, up, back down, and then finish it out. All right, there is my divided slip pocket on one side of my lining, just like that. All right, let's go to the zipper pocket. We are going to work on our zipper facing, okay? You don't have to do this one. Um, I guess it's called zipper pocket trim. You don't have to do the trim, but it sure adds a pretty accent to your lining. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got my placement marking all ready to go. I have some double-sided tape on the back of my trim. I've even marked my center of my trim so I can line it up here as well. All right, so I'm going to take off my double-sided tape. And then I'm going to very carefully try and place this centered onto my lining. This is the tricky part. All right, that's the center there. All right. That looks good. All right, once you have it all down and centered, we are going to sew along the outside of this trim. All right, all along the outside at a top stitch length. Now, if you don't want any back stitching to show, of course, you can always pull it through, which I am going to do. So I'm not going to backstitch to begin. And I'll be pulling my threads through and tying them off in the back. Okay, all my threads are in the back. I have sewn around the outside of my trim. I'm going to tie those threads off and um, melt the ends, and then we will go to the next step. We need to cut the center piece out now of our trim. So you just wanna, maybe. There we go. All right, I'm just gonna cut down each way and I'm gonna carefully just cut this out. So 
so it's not showing when we look at it from the front. So I usually do it from the back and just make sure that I'm not cutting the zipper trim, but I'm getting enough off that it won't show from the front, okay? So go ahead and do that for your zipper. All right, so that's all cut out. That's what the front looks like. That's what the back looks like. I'm gonna set that aside just for a minute. I'm gonna get my zipper pocket pieces and my zipper. I'm going to lay my zipper right side up, my pocket piece right side up, and I'm going to sew along the very edge of that. Um, you could do anywhere from an eighth to a fourth inch seam allowance. And then you want to repeat for the other side. So flip this zipper up like that. I'm going to take my other zipper pocket piece right side up on both and do the same thing. have that sewn on. I'm going to take this to my iron real quick and I want to iron it so this can be as flat as possible because then we're going to put that into our zipper trim and sew around that. So I'm going to um, flatten that with my iron and be right back. Got my zipper nice and flat. I've put double-sided tape on each side of it. I'm going to peel off this bottom one first and place that, and then I'll do my top. Just try and center it as best you can. And then I'm going to flip this and undo the top here, tape, and place the top. All right. So I have my zipper going from left to right. Okay, my pole is going from left to right. I've got that centered in there. My pocket is laid out flat under it. I'm gonna go home, go ahead and sew the full rectangle around this. Again, if you don't want me backstitching, then pull through and don't backstitch. There we go.
Okay, all my threads are back here. I'll tie those. And that's all sewn on. I tied off my threads. And now we're going to close up the pocket. You want to fold down this top piece. And you are going to have a little extra there. Just go ahead and trim that off. And then just close your sides up. All right, that is your zipper pocket. Look how pretty that looks when it's all done with that slip pocket and the zipper pocket trim. Love it. All right. So before we go any further, you want to cut out the boxed corners. She gives the measurements and the pattern. I have mine marked. And then she has additional markings along each side that you need. So don't forget those. And I'm just going to cut these corners out on both sides. All right. And there it is. We are gonna head to the other side of the lining. We're gonna work on our zippered slip pocket. Okay, so I have my zipper. I already did one side of the tab just to make sure I knew what I was doing and I was doing it right. So she has these tabs and you are going to lay them right sides to the zippers and sandwich that zipper in between. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to sew along this folded edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, and then I want to trim this down to a fourth. So it just cuts off a tiny bit, separating this tab down here and just cuts off the tiniest bit of your zipper. So if you need to go back through and melt that, go for it. And then you're going to take this and flip it. Pretty cool. You're going to flip that over. And you're gonna sew that, top stitch that, right here. And that's your zipper tabs, pretty cool. I like how she did that. And then I'm gonna trim these down. So your zipper should be at about 10 inches with these tabs on. Mine may be a little bit more. I don't know. Let me see. Mine's just like maybe a fourth of an inch longer, but it should end up around 10 inches long. Okay. So since that's the case, I'm going to cut evenly about an eighth of an inch off each side here. Trim it down just the tiniest bit. And now I'm at 10. Perfect. Okay. So you have your lining pieces. I'm going to take my first lining piece, place it right side up, and I'm going to place the zipper right side down with my pole to the left when closed. All right. So I want it to the left when closed, all right? And I am just going to baste this on first, which is done at an eighth of an inch. Got that basted on. 
I'm gonna take the other side, my other slip pocket side, and I have already done this. If you haven't, go ahead and trim a half inch off of this other side, all right? So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to place it, so this is going to be right side up, and my new piece is gonna be right side down on top of that same end that we just sewed on, all right? And then you're gonna sew that at a fourth, one fourth inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to fold my fabric away from the zipper and give that, I'm just gonna do a good finger press here. And then I'm gonna top stitch along my zipper. Right here. So that's what we have so far. There's the front, there's the back. Now you're going to take this front piece here and you're gonna flip it up to the top of the zipper here. And you're gonna baste that on first and then you're gonna repeat and you're gonna flip the other side up and sew that at your full seam allowance. And it's making this external like separate zipper pocket piece that we're then gonna put in our bag and it's gonna be a slip pocket as well. It's pretty cool how she designed it. Oh, whoops, that's just supposed to be an eighth of an inch. Sorry, eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's okay. Not a huge deal. So now I'm gonna flip this side up and sandwich that zipper in between. So this is kind of what we're looking at, right? Both sides are flipped up. My zipper is in the middle. And now I'm gonna sew at that 1 4th inch seam allowance. going to turn this so it's right side out and my lining sits in the middle so the lining is the one that you cut a half inch shorter so it should lay in there pretty nicely and I think I could probably Did I top stitch that? No, it's too tight of a little thing. So I'm guessing that's gonna be the back part of your pocket. Yep. Look at that. So we made a tube, right? So I'm gonna take that to my iron and just give it a good press real quick like this with everything laying nicely and then we'll install it into our lining. My zipper pocket is nice and pressed. I am going to take my center lining panel here. I've marked my placement up from the bottom. I'm going to take my finished zipper slip pocket. I'm gonna line it up on that line right there. 
All right, and clip that into place. And then I'm gonna sew around the three sides and attach that to my center panel. Make sure your zipper pull is at the left. So you want it to go left to right and you should have your top stitching that you did on this pocket on this side as well. All right, here we go. cool is that you got your zipper pocket here right and then behind that is a slip pocket that's awesome all right so you should have two lining sides to this and those are gonna go here and you're gonna sew those on at your seam allowance and then we're going to um, turn it and flip it over and top stitch You may need help right here where the zipper tab is getting your foot over. I should have used something, that's okay. So I'm gonna press this panel out towards, this way my seam allowance is going out towards the side panel and I'm gonna top stitch along this. Okay, I'm gonna repeat for this other side. Beautiful. All right, so we want to go ahead and cut out our bottom corners. What you can do is just lay your other one on top and do some trimming. You want to not measure again? Look at that. All right, next up. All right, so we have this little clip we're gonna put on. I just have my piece of cotton, folded my raw edges into the middle and ironed that. I'm gonna take my clip and put that in. And I'm gonna sew down, over, and up.
Okay, and then I'm going to place it five inches in from the top right here, and I'm gonna baste it onto my lining piece. All right, so there's my clip holder, key holder, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so next we're gonna work on our glasses holder. This is the last piece of lining pockets. So I have my glasses holder here. I'm gonna fold it, so it's laying long ways. I'm gonna fold it this way. And I'm gonna sew these two pieces together, this edge right here. I'm going to turn that right side out and I'm going to go press that at my iron with this seam up at the top here. All right, so I have that ironed, my seam's at the top. I'm going to top stitch that seam. And then I'm going to fold it again in half with my raw edges matching. Okay, these are my raw edges. And I'm going to baste those raw edges together. So this is what we have. There's my top seam, my raw edges. Doesn't matter which lining piece you grab, grab a lining piece. <clears throat> and you are going to align it with the side and the bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, the side and the bottom of your lining right here. And we're gonna baste it along here. So this is my raw edge to raw edge, okay? All right, and that's how you put in your glasses. I'm super excited to see how this goes because I think it's gonna be like that you just slide your glasses in. I love, love, love that addition. All right, we are going to work on our recessed zipper next. Okay, we're gonna work on our recessed zipper panel. So I have my main zipper. I have a marking three-fourths of an inch way down and I am going to open that zipper up and I need to do that, that turn, that 90 degree angle. So I pinch at that line and bring my zipper down to meet and then I put a little pin in it and then I will baste my, I will baste my zipper down at that angle. So do it evenly on both sides. And that's what you're looking at. I'm gonna baste that down. After that's basted down, you just want to trim your little zipper tail so they're even with your zipper. And then you want to melt that so it doesn't unravel on you. All 
All right, we're gonna add this to our recessed zipper panels. I do mine just a tiny bit different, but pretty much the same as she has in her pattern. So I've turned down all of my edges by the width of my double-sided tape, okay? All except for my two last lining pieces. I have two edges that I haven't folded down yet. I'm gonna wait to fold them down when I'm placing it on my panel to make sure I get them all even together. So I'm gonna take my first one and lay it right sides together with my zipper, my exterior piece with my zipper, and I start it about right where the fold ends, okay? And I'm gonna baste this onto my zipper first. And it sometimes helps just to unzip the zipper. All right, so I'm just gonna baste this on first, right sides together. And I don't go past my panel piece. I just stay within the panel piece. You don't want to sew over and outside of it, okay? All right, so that's my first part. So I'm going to flip that over. And now I want to add my lining piece, right sides together, right sides with my exterior. And I'm going to start with the folded side here and match that up first. All right, and clip that. So I'm going to start sewing. And then when I get kind of close to the, um, almost to the end, that's when I'm going to fold this piece and make sure it folds evenly with my exterior piece. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm going to sew that at my one fourth inch seam allowance. So about here, I can kind of see where I need to fold this, all right, to make it even. So I'm gonna take the tape off and it's a little bit smaller than I have been folding the other edges. So it's a good thing I waited. About right there and then they line up, okay. And again, you want to stay within those zipper panels. You don't want to go onto your zipper while you're sewing. All right. So now I want to fold these pieces so they are right sides out. And I will top stitch along my zipper and then I will close up the panel and connect the two pieces together. And once I get to the end here, I'm gonna turn it and now I'm just going to close up while well, I'm gonna stitch this one closed. And now I'm gonna baste this. And I forgot, I should have started, I should have started uh, sewing right here and come up. I don't know what I was thinking. So I will do that. And then I'll come up here. All right. 
right, so that's the first half of my zipper panel. And now all you do is you try to get it even with the other side and you sew on the other side. So I'm gonna close my zipper first and place my exterior piece and try and get it lined up and even with the other side. We're about right there. And I'm gonna clip that. And then I will do the same steps that we just did for the first side. I will repeat all of those steps. Here we go. So there's my zipper panel. I put a zipper end on there. You can do a tab, you can do a metal zipper end, however you wanted to do it. Super simple, it just has a screw. Um, and then I marked the center of my panel. I have my two lining top pieces here and then my lining pieces. So we're gonna add this. So decide which one you want to be the back of your bag. I think I want this to be the back of my bag. No, maybe this one actually. Let's do this one because it's got the pretty little pocket here. Okay, so my zipper pulls are all going to the left. I've got my center clipped here. I'm just gonna line those up and I'm gonna baste that onto my lining. My zipper is right side up. My zipper panel is right side up, okay? My thread came out here in just a second. Okay, maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna baste that on my lining and then we'll add the top piece. Now I want to get one of my top pieces here and I'm gonna go face down, so right side down. And I'm gonna sew that on at my little seam allowance. Okay, and then you're going to want to flip this up and we are going to top stitch along this top panel piece through that seam allowance, okay? first side. So now we want to take our other lining piece, right side up, and then I'm going to take my zipper panel and flip this on right side up. 
Oh, I don't have my center marked here. Let me mark my center. I'm going to just do the same exact steps that we just did for the other side. I'm going to repeat it for this side. Time to close up our lining. So I went ahead and marked my one inch along the top. I didn't put the tape on yet, but I did my markings just because it was easier laying flat to mark it. So I was just go ahead and doing that. So we want to lay our linings right sides together and we are going to sew up all the sides. Again, you don't need to leave an opening because we are doing a drop in lining with this one. All right, so I'm just clipping my two lining pieces together, matching everything up, all the important things like these top panels here, make sure those line up. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing this. I'm gonna start at that 3 8 seam allowance. And then I'm going to increase to about 5 8 to make sure your lining fits snugly into your bag. And then along the bottom, she suggests a 1 half inch seam allowance along the bottom, okay? So that's what these um, markings that you did down here, that's what you want your seam allowance to be. All right, so we're gonna start at that three eighths. And then once you get past this lining top, I'm gonna to increase to that five eighths. over here at a half of an inch. Sorry, so this is bigger. This 5 8 is bigger than your half inch. So you're doing a half inch along the bottom and a 5 8 along the sides. back to that five eighths. And then when I come up here to the top, I'm going to go back to that three eighths inch seam allowance. All right. So now we need to box our corners. All right. This one has my glasses case on it. So let's see. Flatten the bottom of the glasses case holder the same at the corner. So like this, yep, we're flattening it. Yep, that's what we're doing. Okay, so 
Let me double check I'm showing you guys the right thing here. Come on. All right. So here is my glasses case holder. And I am flattening it inside of that boxed corner. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Because then it gives it that cool popped out shape to add your glasses into the pocket. Really cool idea. I'm totally digging this. I'm going to use this in other bags. I love this glasses case holder. All right, so we're gonna sew that together down here. And I think we're just doing our regular 3 8 seam allowance down here at the bottom corners, okay? After you box them. Okay, here we go. You can add a second row of stitching just like we did on our exterior for some reinforcement there, some extra reinforcement I'm going to. Okay. And then do the same on your other corner. Okay, I wanna show you how cool this glasses case holder is inside. Look at that. Do you see that? You're just gonna slip your glasses right in there. How awesome is that pocket? God, it's a gorgeous lining, guys. It is a gorgeous lining. Okay, sorry, I'll get over myself. Here we go. We want to, again, put some double-sided tape along this one inch line, like right above it. And then I'm going to be folding the top edge of my lining down to meet that one inch line all around. I'm going to flatten my seams and then we will drop in our lining and sew up our bag. Okay, we're on the last step. I've got my exterior and I've got my lining all folded down and ready to go. Now you want to put the two together. Make sure you've got everything going the way that you want. So that's the back part of my bag, lined up with the back. All right, and this is the front. And now you just wanna clip everything into place. All right, so you wanna get this as centered and even as possible. So I'm going to line up my side with my D-ring here first. I know that's my side right there and I'm going to come over here and do the same thing all right now if you are super nervous about this drop-in lining you could do a couple things you could um, you could put double-sided tape in between the two layers to help them not move or anything but you just need to be aware Sewing through double-sided tape can be tricky sometimes and it can gum up your needle. So I am not going to do the double-sided tape. I'm just going to put a ton of clips and go super slow as I top stitch my bag together. My piece of advice too is check your bobbin. Make sure that before you start this that you have a full bobbin. 
that would be sad if you ran out while you were top stitching. I'm putting lots of clips on. All right. Oh gosh, this is a gorgeous, well-designed bag. I just am in love with this. Look at that. <gasps> okay, so I am going to very slowly and carefully top stitch my bag together. So everybody hold your fat breath, fingers crossed. Let's go. Now I am going to top stitch from the inside of my bag. It's all like I have white vinyl, white thread. It will blend nicely. My stitching should look good. So if that is an option for you, that might help with the size of this bag and what we are doing. All right, so here we go. Find a starting spot. I like to start usually somewhere on the back of my bag. Now you may need to use some help getting over some of these seams. And I'm also gonna put stuff underneath here, maybe. I don't want my feed dogs chewing up my vinyl back here.
Okay. Oops. Look at that. Went nice and slow. Protected all of my seams. That's it. We did it. Okay, we are all done. Look at that gorgeous thing. I put on my straps. I did um, some strap ends on the end because I just think that just adds a little bit of, this is such a classy bag. I really feel like it needs some strap ends on your handles. And then I did double rivets instead of sewing a line and then putting a rivet in. I just wanted that look. I think that's a great look and two rivets is better than one on the handles because it's such a big bag. Um, that is it. My edge piece did not come in time for this video. That's okay. It still looks gorgeous without it. So you can do it with or without. Um, you guys, this bag is worth every bit. Look how gorgeous it is. All right. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Thanks for hanging on with me as we sewed up this bag. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you all next time. Quick edit. Look what just came to my doorstep. My little trim for my flap. I got quite a few different finishes. Yeah, I ordered them from Emmeline Bags. I will link it below. I don't know if other people carry it, but this is the Metal Edge Trim Style C from Emmeline Bags. So I am going to slip that onto my flap. Um, she does suggest in the pattern that if you need to hammer it down, like the thickness of your flap down with a mallet, you can do that. But mine actually just look oh, it looks so good it just slides right on there it fits perfectly so all i have to do is put two little screws into the back of that and that just adds even more to that bag all right that's it <laughs>